Today on John McLucas' channel, we take a look at how riffs, beards, and gear got so big. I'm going to assume that most, if not all of you, already know Fluff, but if you don't, he's been on YouTube for about eight years, and his channel's tagline is riffs, beards, and gear, so that, that pretty much covers it. And something that I really want to know right off the bat is the way that he handles and overcomes adversity. He went full time on YouTube in 2015 after getting fired from Boeing for ordering Ziploc bags on work time and also at the same time went through a really rough divorce. So in the span of two to four weeks, he lost almost everything that he knew in his life. And while I know that he said it and I'm sure that he spent a ton of time being down on himself, feeling bad and really trying to work through everything, he's turned a lot of that pain, fear and just chaos that went down and turned it into an incredibly thriving career in music, which is something that I just incredibly admire and I hope that I can reflect on those situations the same way. In the matter of, it was like two or three weeks, I had literally had lost my entire life. I'd lost everything. And I thought, well, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna fail, it's gonna be, do, be do, me doing something that I love, not something that I fucking hate. If you want to check out that full interview, it's incredible. I would super recommend that you do it. It's in the description, but after, after this video, then you can go to that video. Number one, he established authority on being a gear channel very early on YouTube. If you've seen a handful of his videos, you can tell that he's very, very intentionally steered away from doing anything in like the rock, comedy, metal world, and is very specifically information on tone, mostly guitar stuff. That's what Fluff does. And that narrow niche choice has really shaped the public perception of him being the authority on the topic. And for myself and many others, Fluff is the number one authority when it comes to gear reviews, demos, or anything in the vast ocean of tone. His original channel trailer says it best. And while his production and technical skills have improved, his messaging has stayed incredibly consistent. Guitar, tone, gear. And that kind of brings me to a 1B point, and that's that he has a lot of evergreen content that's consistently bringing in views over time. For those who are unfamiliar with the term in YouTube language, evergreen content is something like home recording on a budget, guitarist guide to string gauges, and anything that is a very broad, general, kind of more in the how-to or instructional tutorial realm that'll be valuable forever and ever, no matter kind of what phase of YouTube is going on. And these kind of things can be incredibly valuable because while you might have your more niche videos or more specific or maybe based on something cultural or trendy, this kind of stuff will be there forever. And if it ranks really high, you will consistently be getting people who are into learning about guitar string gauges into your channel. Content that isn't as evergreen is something like commenting on YouTube drama or just piggybacking off the success of bigger YouTubers by talking about them to get attention for yourself. And Am I doing this all wrong? I'm out here doing my best to provide value and entertainment to people, but can I really ever stand up to the amazing work of the YouTubers I talk about? Huh. Who am I to think I could be big on YouTube? Nothing left to do but put on the mask of contentment and live out a life devoted to doing what I think other people want of me. And this evergreen content helps reinforce that Fluff is an authority on guitar. Number three, he isn't your typical YouTuber because a lot of people, when they kind of develop this YouTube personality, it's very over the top. It's very like, what's cracking guys? You know, welcome to the video. Make sure you like it. You know, it's just very spastic, very kind of shocking. And, and I get it, you know, it's grabbing the attention of people to start. I refer to this as SSS or spastic subscribe syndrome, which is when a YouTuber will just be ridiculous over the top and change your demeanor to try to get you to do their call to action, which typically is subscribe, like, comment, turn on the bell. What's fascinating is that Fluff goes the exact opposite way. He has never once did a call to action of make sure to subscribe. And instead it depends on the merit and the value of the content to compel somebody to subscribe, which is a different format in a way to do it, but it almost feels like this kind of counter response to the way that most people go. And it is unique to just see an outro card that's just him sitting playing guitar. You can kind of do what you want and he leaves it up to, was that valuable? Did that help you out? Like, did you like this video? Because then, you know, letting them kind of decide for themselves if they want more of him, which is a very different approach, but something that I can really appreciate in the landscape of people who are just popping at you all the time for like no apparent reason. On top of that, his content has no filler in it. His intros are very straight to the point. He just says what's happening in the video and then the intro and then you're in the video like this. Today on Riffs, Beards, and Gear, we check out the brand new Mammoth Slinkies from Ernie Ball. Which as a point I always seem to make in these videos, 
is very authentic to who he is, and that's why he creates videos in that style. But it also calls back to his original thesis in his original channel trailer. Moving on, there are actually three more points that I want to hit with this video. And number four is series-based content. Fluff's FAQ Monday is almost at 300 episodes and is the longest running series from a music YouTuber I've ever seen. And the beauty of a Q&A style show is that it's much simpler to create. And that's not at all a slight to the series FAQ Mondays, but I think it's actually a big part of why it does so well. This touches on a concept that brands and creators love, which is user-generated content. And it very simply is what it sounds like, where if you're a guitar company and there's a, somebody posted a photo of them on Instagram playing your guitar, you simply repost that as your post for maybe that morning, instead of going out, you know, getting the guitar set up, bringing in lights, shooting it, importing it, you know, using somebody else's content within, you know, of course, like fairness, crediting, tagging, and all that kind of stuff to then benefit your brand and kind of help you have recurring content coming in. And that's exactly what FAQ Mondays is doing because by default, he's answering questions that people submit. So he just has to show up, curate the questions, figure out the order, sit down, answer them. And that's a really simple, effective video. And with that, I wanna make two more points because what's great about these user-generated content kind of videos is that when you think about what he has to do for a gear video, you know, he has to decide on the piece of gear. He has to set it up, come up with riffs, record, you know, do the actual recording itself, which is either miking, you know, like going through that whole process, mixing the song, filming it, editing all those angles down. It's a lot of work compared to compiling questions, sit down, you know, get everything set up and then go. And something else to consider before we try to start a Q&A show is that it seems that people only care about a Q&A show when the person is already big. Because I know if I started one, I feel like it would get a very poor response. And that's not knocking the wonderful people that I'm so, so glad to have here watching my content. Because thank you so much for spending your time with me. But I don't think there's enough that are really, really into like hearing my opinions on a variety of topics. But if I'm wrong, let me know. Like comment down below if that's something you'd be into. And I will 100% do it. But I just need to make sure that people would actually watch it. Because I feel like you're interested in Fluff's FAQ Mondays because it's him, you wanna know his input on stuff. But if it's a smaller creator, you're not gonna to wanna to know as much. So before you go out and do that for yourself, make sure that you have a demand for it before you try to do some user-generated content style videos. Number five is the cheapest series. This series is the undisputed number champion of his channel with four of his top 12 videos being from the cheapest series and the initial video, Cheapest Guitar on Amazon, being responsible for this massive bump in his analytics. The overwhelming response to that video is actually pretty cool in a couple of different ways, because one, a video like that is evergreen. Amazon's not going anywhere, so you know that it's going to last for a very long time and people will always find it interesting, because it's just an interesting premise. It doesn't matter if it's in five years, 10 years from now, people are gonna wanna watch that video. But on top of that, the premise of the cheapest blank on blank can be turned into anything. And he has currently done 11 total variations with endless amounts on the horizon. This last piece, which I think will be instrumental in vaulting riffs, beards, and gear to the next level, is the introduction of a co-host, Josh Wildhorn. This is a brilliant move because it not only expands the ability for the riffs, beards, and gear brand to have more content on the platform, but it also allows him to take a step back and think about more of the macro of the business, which I know is difficult when you're in the trenches creating every single piece of content, and it just makes it difficult to scale. So bringing in other creators on the platform to create on-brand content that, of course, you know, has, they have to line up with your values, they have to have a similar delivery style, still being very much within the Rift Spirits gear feel, but it allows you to then just expand into a completely new level. And what's amazing is Josh is already crushing it, which I'm not surprised because he's super awesome and everybody should be enjoying Josh as a human. But like, take a look at this. Like that is stunning, looks beautiful. Great job, Josh. So make sure to go check that out as well. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. You should definitely be checking out this video in the top right. It's another How'd That Person Get So Big series video. I think you're really gonna like it. Um, other than that, I hope you have a great day. You're already subscribed, have the bell on. You're probably in that other video by now because you super wanna watch it. And tune in next time where I react to people reacting to my ability to get big off of how they get so big videos, videos. Peace.